Please go to elithecomputerguy.com in order to view schematics, code, and more for the projects that you are learning about. Welcome back. So in today's video, I want to show you how to use an infrared proximity sensor using the digital output. So when you use infrared proximity sensors, you can use them both for digital output or for analog output. When you're doing digital, basically it's either on or off. You don't get a range of values. When you do analog, you can get a range of values. When you do digital, it's either on or off. Either something is close or it's not close, you don't get anything in between. So this can be very valuable, especially when you're building things like uh, autonomous vehicles that are going to be moving around in environments with obstacles. So this is a way basically you can have the vehicle be able to tell if it gets too close to an object without actually having to bump up against it. So that's what makes these infrared uh, distance sensors uh, a valuable thing to use. So with that, let's go over to the workbench. I'll show you the components of this particular project, then we'll show you how to code it up, put it all together, and uh, show you how it all works. So for this project, there really are only two major components. Of course, we've got the Arduino board. We're using Uno, but you could use another Arduino board, obviously, for a project like this. And we have our infrared proximity sensor. These are the only two major components you need for this project. So we put those two aside. We can take a look at how I've built uh, this particular project. So again, you can see we have the, uh, the Arduino board over here. We have our infrared sensor. And so what I did is I just kind of mounted this infrared sensor using one of these standoffs, a couple of nylon screws, a nylon, uh, nylon uh, nut, and put it onto this little plastic thing. And basically I did that so that I can test how this works, right? So if I plug the, uh, the infrared sensor uh, into something like a breadboard, then when I did that, it would point straight up and it wouldn't give me a good feel for how the infrared sensor works in the environment that I would want it in. So if I'm gonna be using one of these infrared proximity sensors, I'm generally going to be using it on a vehicle. And generally, if it's on a vehicle, then it is going to be uh, positioned horizontally. So putting it onto a little plastic apparatus like this uh, just makes it easier. So with that, uh, hooking it up is pr pretty simple. Uh, you, you have the sensor and then you just have the, the three wires. So all the way on the right hand side, you have the voltage, you have the VCC. VCC then goes into the five volt on the Arduino board. The middle pin for this particular sensor is the ground. That goes to the ground on the Arduino board. And then all the way on the left, that is the out or the signal. And that we're going to be putting over onto digital pin eight. So this is all you have to do to be able to build this particular project. Let's go over to the code and take a look at how to make this thing work. So here's a code for this project. So all we're going to be doing is we are going to be doing a serial print. So we're going to be printing out the serial monitor. If the infrared sensor detects an object, it will print stop. If it does not detect an object, it will print all clear. So that's relatively simple here. So the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to define the infrared pin, so the infrared sensor pin. So we're going to do pound define IR is what we're going to be calling the pin. And that is digital pin eight. We're then going to have to create a variable uh, so that we can uh, check against that in the if else statements. So we're going to create an int variable and we're going to call that obstacle. So this is what we're going to be testing against in the if else statement. And that's all we do there. We then go and we set up the environment. This code is going to run in. So we're going to do the pin mode function. So pin mode IR, and we are going to put that to input. So it's going to be uh, receiving data from the sensor. So we put it to input. And then in order to be able to read this from the serial monitor, we have to start the serial monitor. So serial.begin 9600. So that's all you have to do to set up the environment. Past that, we are then going to go into the loop. And so here what we're going to do is the variable obstacle. We're going to say variable obstacle equals the function digital read IR. So it's going to go to IR. So it's going to go to pin eight. It's going to do a digital read of pin eight. And whatever the value is, that is now going to be the value for obstacle. Then all we do is we go down here. This seems counterintuitive. This seems kind of weird. But as far as a variable and the infrared uh, is concerned, low means uh, means obstacle. High means not obstacle. So you would, you would think there's an obstacle just in your brain. You think high would be obstacle. Low would be all clear and for whatever reason it's not that way so basically low means there's an obstacle high means all clear so what we're going to do here is we're going to go say if 
obstacle equals, so that's the two equal signs. So make sure you do double equals, right? If you do a single equal, it sets the value of the variable. If you do double equals, that's when it says if this is equal to that. So if double equal signs is low, so low, then what we're going to do is we're going to do serial dot print line. So it's going to print this and go to the next line, stop. So if it, if it detects low, it's going to print stop. Else, so anything else, there's only two, it's digital, there's only two options here. So either it's low or high. So if it's, something, if it's, if it's not low, it's gonna be high. So then we're gonna do serial dot print line, all clear. So it'll print stop. If there's an obstacle, then next line. Uh, if there's not an obstacle, print all clear, go to the next line. And then for this, I've set this for a delay of 500 milliseconds, about half a second. So this is fast enough uh, to see it operate rather quickly, but still slow enough that we can actually perceive what it's doing. So with that, what we're going to do is we're going to upload this code to the Arduino and then take a look uh, to see what the results are. So now that we have the code and we have our little project built, I'm going to be plugging this thing in. We are then going to upload the code and then we can go to tools, we can go to serial monitor, and we can see what it's seeing. So as we can see here, it sees all clear. So currently there's nothing in front of the infrared sensor, so it's not detecting anything. As I bring my hand closer and closer and closer, you'll see at a certain point and now see something, so it tells you to stop. So again, so if you had this on a robot car, some kind of autonomous vehicle, it means that eh, right about the one inch mark uh, this would trigger and then it would do whatever you had told it to do. If I bring my hand away, it goes back, bring it forward, it says stop. Now one of the nice things about this particular sensor is it does have the green LED. So whenever something is too close, the green LED goes off. So this is one of the nice things that you can use for a troubleshooting process. So if you're writing code for the infrared sensors and you're not sure what the problem is, is it the sensor, is it your code, so on and so forth. The nice thing here is you can see that the infrared sensor is working properly. So if your code isn't processing properly, then you need then you know to go troubleshoot the code, right? So with this sensor, if if that light wasn't going off, then you may think, oh, maybe I screwed up on how I wired this thing. Maybe there's a fault with the sensor, that type of thing. Whereas if the green light goes off when it's supposed to, then you know, okay, most likely the sensor is working properly. I need to figure out what's going on with the code. And so this is what we can see, basically how the infrared sensor works. Now one of the things that you should do, again, whenever you're using some, a proximity sensor, I talked about this before with like the ultrasonic distance sensor, one of the things you should check is basically the different types of angles you can approach the sensor at and when something will be detected. So like one of the problems with ultrasonic distance sensors is that if an object comes at them from a sharp angle, like a 45 degree angle, they won't work properly because the signal comes out and then it reflects in another direction and doesn't go back to the receiver. One of the cool parts about the infrared uh, sensor is that as you can see, even if you come in at a very steep angle, it's still able to detect that there's an object there. So that's one of the benefits of this type of infrared sensor. And one of the things you should be thinking about when you look at proximity sensors. So again, if you look at, let's say an ultrasonic distance sensor, it is much more accurate and it, and it can be much more refined. But the problem is, is if, an, if it comes at an object at an angle, let's say a 45 degree angle, it won't function properly. Whereas with this infrared sensor, it's not nearly as accurate, it's not nearly as precise, but you can come at it at all kinds of different angles and it will still work how it's supposed to work. So these are some of the things that you should be thinking about whenever you're dealing with any kind of proximity sensors. So that's all there is uh, to using an infrared proximity sensor with the digital output to detect if something has come cl too close to your particular Arduino project. Again, this is very valuable in things such as autonomous vehicles, basically to make sure that the vehicle isn't bumping into things as it goes around. Uh, whenever you're thinking about creating an autonomous vehicle, you're going to need to think about creating an array of sensors. So normally when you see these vehicles, there's an array of sensors. So you may have an ultrasonic distance sensor, and that that tries to detect a longer distance and tries to give the vehicle more information so it can try to pre-plan what its route's going to be. You'll have a bumper sensor, so right, obviously if the vehicle, you know, if, if, if all the other sensors fail and the vehicle bumps up against something, you're going to want to have a bumper sensor uh, so that when it physically makes contact with something, 
it is able to react to it. But a way that you can have the vehicle react when it gets close to an object, but not so close that it actually hits the object, is you can use one of these infrared uh, distance sensors. And then again, when an object gets too close, it just sends a signal, and then your Arduino uh, project can then process the signal and determine what to do next. Uh, so that's how you use one of these infrared sensors. It's just very, very simple. If something's far away, nothing's detected. If something gets too close, then the, uh, the vehicle can react. So that's all there is to it. As always, I enjoyed doing this video and I look forward to seeing you at the next one.